Thank you very much for joining um, London today. I'm very excited to have Rob and Leo on, first time on the show, so welcome. Um, and, you know, as everybody knows, I read the papers, I listen to the radio, and London is right up there as a talking point um, when it comes to property. Um, and we've got an expert, we've got the Manager Director of uh, Fraser & Co, Robert Fraser there. Good morning, Robert. Morning, Chris. Morning, everyone. Morning and Leo. You look like you're going to. Good morning. Looks like you're going to land an aeroplane. So, yeah. yes, London is doing really well, uh, and we're all excited about that. And today, um, we're going to talk about London, obviously, but in particular, four um, four projects that Fraser have got, all in different parts of London, all different um, price points. So, we're, hopefully, it's going to be uh, of great interest. So, um, Leo, over to you. Morning. Perfect. Well, you know, we just wanted to kind of go over some really fantastic development sites, some really good pockets of London, which are seeing huge regeneration, lots of investment, huge changes. And we're trying to kind of, you know, pitch to you guys getting in early, get in all the early phases of these regenerations. So I, I think I'll let Robert quickly introduce Fraser and Co and talk about, you know, his business and uh, how it all started. So um, I started the business back in 1995. The, the idea was at the time that we would um, uh, assist our international clients with um, development opportunities or getting in early in respect to developments um, and find them opportunities for decent capital growth right across the, uh, the UK. Um, since then, we've been involved in various regeneration projects being um, at the press over in Elephant and Castle, uh, over in Canary Wharf, Paddington Basin, King's Cross. And what I thought would be a good idea for today would be um, as a talking point to for Leo to run through a few areas that where we believe there's potential for good capital appreciation over the next 10, 15 years. Um, London, the face of London has changed quite um, considerably over the last 20 years, as everyone probably knows. Um, and anyone looking for potential capital growth opportunities uh, is probably rummaging around in, in the dark. So we thought today would be quite a good idea to come up with a few uh, suggestions um, of some projects that we feel is predominant in areas where there is going to be potential growth capital appreciation, regeneration areas. One of those in particular, which um, Leo will discuss with you, would be the um, massive regeneration, the biggest regeneration project in Europe, which is between Park Royal and Old Oak Common. So without much further ado, what I'll do is I'll um, suggest to Leo to run through these projects, and then perhaps Chris can reintroduce me at the end and I'm very happy to do um, have a discussion point and also potentially have a Q&A with anyone that wants to throw any questions in my direction. Leo, Rob. Perfect. Let me just uh, crack on. So, you know, we don't want to overload everyone with information, so we're going to keep it nice and simple. So this is, Robert's just been through this. Just go over the team quickly. You know, we're a very small team going for a more of a personal touch. We're not some big corporate, you know, we just want to find opportunities for the right people. And that's how we kind of present ourselves. So our first really exciting development, as Robert said, one of the largest regeneration sites in Europe, you know, about a 26 billion pound project. You know, between Old Oak Common, Park Royale, it's absolutely huge. This is on the new HS2 site, and it's going to be a new Crossrail link as well. You know, it's going to complete at the end of next year. This is one of the amazing developers that we've worked with in the past. They were responsible for the 54-story tower in One West Point in Acton. So, you know, at the start of the launch in the first phase, these apartments were selling for £800 a square foot. And now, you know, we've still got a few apartments left. And they're, you know, they're saying selling for £1,100, £1,200 a square foot. You know, so we're looking at almost 30% capital growth there, if my numbers are right. So it's really exciting to be working with these guys again. Huge opportunity here, get in early. 
great entry level prices from four hundred thirty nine thousand pounds. Chris, Leo, um, you say it's completing it in a year. What stage are they up to now? People always like to know how far up they are, where they're going, where they're on on time. Well, we've got you know we've got the hoarding up. Construction is commencing very shortly. Um, we will hopefully pop down today and get some updated photos of the site. But you know, such a big project like this, they're definitely you know well underway. So I'm hoping to do a site visit today or tomorrow. Get down there, get some updated photos. And really kind of see how the landscape is changing. You know, it was previously quite an industrial area, but you know, I think there's an estimated 22 and a half thousand new jobs coming in. Sorry, new homes and 65,000 new jobs. So it's a great opportunity to get into this scheme early, get in on the re regeneration early, and hopefully see some really good capital gains. A okay, question's just come in, Leo. Um, how far from, let's say, central London? Um, by tube is this? How how long? So with HS2, it's going to be very, very, you know, convenient to travel all over the country. But, you know, we're looking to about six minutes into Paddington from, you know, from the station, which is absolutely fantastic, and nine minutes to Bond Street. I don't know how well you can see the image at the bottom. Uh, no, but, no not, know, not very really well. That's, not very well. That's why I asked. It's okay. Yeah, because no, it'll be a, a cross rail link, you know, it's going to be very, very well, you know. And it's only going to be about a 20 minute cycle in Paddington, which is um, a really good selling point as well. Thanks, Leah. Let me go on to our next phase. So, this is the icon uh, in Wood Green. So, this is ending a lot sooner. Um, it's only six stops to King's Cross. And, you know, you're right near the station here on this uh, amazing up and coming high street. Again, we're going to have potential for Crossrail 2 coming in. It's a long way away, but this is kind of the point. You know, if you get into these schemes early, you will see these good capital gains. And, you know, a lot of people are going to start moving to these areas. So it's going to be an absolutely fantastic opportunity. This really exciting 15 minutes in Bond Street, 10 minutes to King's Cross. You know, these sites are getting so much better connected now, and that's what's really exciting for us. It's about a three minute walk to the station as well, and the price is from 350,000, really attractive. Thank you, that looks really good. So, moving all the way over to the east now, we've got something very exciting. We've got about 7,000 new homes coming up in this area from about five different developers. So, you know, these massive companies are seeing huge potential here. You know, and this is coming in, this scheme is coming in, we're looking at about 7% better off compared to our competitors at the moment in terms of pricing. So, you know, these apartments are selling fantastically. It's a great opportunity to get in on this development. Uh, you know, we've got about 15.8% rental growth between June 2020 and June 2021. Six minutes to Canary Wharf. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. We've got the District Line, Langdon DLR, and the Hammersmith City Line all in very close proximity. 783 apartments here and more phases to be planned. So again, what we're trying to iterate is get in early, first phase, off plan. That's where you start seeing the better prices and the lower pound per square foot. Okay, somebody's actually price per square foot per development. I get this question a lot. So um, I know you've already done three, but uh, yeah, just bear that in mind. Thank you. Sure. So price, I know um, in the Middle East we deal with square meters a lot more, but over here we're, we're still on square foot. Um, it's a really important metric for us to go on here because it's all about seeing where the value is. And, you know, it's all, it's all good buying a flat at X price, but if you don't have, you know, the area, it's, um, it's really important for us to, you know, stay in touch with and keep an eye on. Vision point. So this, again, we're coming over to the southwest now. You know, we've tried to pick an option from each kind of sector here on the compass, if you like. Uh, this is finishing in September. Really promising. 17 stories. We've sold a few units in here now. Very popular new area. We're talking about 20 minutes to Battersea Park and Chelsea. 
10 minutes to Clapham Junction, so you could get all across the city very easily. And there is actually planning to extend the northern line into Clapham Junction, so even better connectivity. We actually uh, we, uh, we, we know this uh, we know this development because we've uh, you've actually, there's a, a show flat open now. So uh, one of our clients has actually been over there and had a look and is looking to uh, looking to buy as you as you know. Um, it's really interesting project. And it's in a nice area as well, isn't it? It's a good area. Really nice area, and the fantastic part about this is obviously the main focus is regeneration. Just across the street, we have a huge 1.4 billion pound investment. From Wandsworth Council, you know, there's going to be open space, green space, commercial, really nice kind of restaurant. And that's where we're trying to iterate is this is a five, ten year plan. Get in now, get a great apartment, you know, with potential river views. A lot of these units have used over the Thames. Be about a two minute walk across the street to the Thames as well. You know, this is selling really well and proving to be very popular. There's not a huge amount left because there's only, I think, four apartments on each level. So it's really quite exciting for us to be able to sell this and, you know, go Leo, going well here. Leo, a question's just come in. Um, as far as payment plans are concerned, can you just run through and are they, is it the same pay, payment plan for all four developments or do they differ? Yeah, so, you know, payment plans are all kind of standardised uh, in London now. Uh, it's quite popular, you know, we, you know, we'll find a unit for you. You like the unit, you pay a reservation fee between 2000 and 5000 pounds. And then you've got three weeks to exchange contract, pay 10%. And then you just have to wait until completion. So that's when you either take out your mortgage or you take out your cash, get that ready and you pay the 90% the day before you get the keys. Super okay. simple process. Uh, and um, am I right in thinking the two or five thousand pound res fee comes off your exchange money? Yeah, so that will all be either refunded or accounted in. Okay, Depends I've got on you. Who receives it? But we we typically receive it as we deal with all the kind of agency up until completion. I'm just going to put a little caveat in there because sometimes people get confused. So it's it's. 2,000 or 5,000 to reserve, 10% on exchange of contracts and the rest on completion. Um, and that maybe would include a mortgage. And at the more, moment, obviously, mortgages are, uh, you know, on everybody's lips. You can't put the radio on or open the Daily Mail without reading about mortgages. Um, so we, are, we do talk about 65% mortgages loan to value, although that can change up or down depending on people's circumstances. So we have a mortgage broker at Holborn. Um, and uh, more than happy to, to to introduce you if anyone's got any questions. But that's my my little caveat there, Leo. Perfect. I think the fantastic point with off plan is, and you know these later completions in 2025 is, you know mortgage rates could drop in two years. You know why not reserve the good unit now at a low price to square foot, pay your 10 percent, and then it's a waiting game. You know who knows what the rates are going to return to. Yeah, um, another question is coming actually it's from the same person. He says three weeks to exchange is rather fast for the Middle East. Is there any wiggle room on that or are you hard and fast? No, yeah, there's always wiggle room. We can always factor that into negotiation. That's more of a, it's not like a restriction. It's more of a, you know, this is how efficient and quick our solicitors of choice are. That, okay. That's what it's saying. It's like, you know, if you're looking to move, get it under wrap, get your unit three weeks. But, you know, if you need, a month or you know six weeks we can factor that into offers and negotiations that's Thank more you. of a positive point on our end if you like yeah that's fine sorry i answered that question um right so vision point now you've got four there all right somebody's already asked the question right you've got four which one's the best then <laughs> so i'm a bit biased uh, i'm currently living in uh southwest in uh back city. so you know I, I really love vision point we actually have a scheme directly opposite this, um, and prices there are £1,200 per square foot, right? Vision point, we're looking at £950 per square foot, just to be on the other side of the river. They look at each other, and I find that really um, fascinating. And from an investment point of view, vision point has a very, very low service charge, right? So a lot of schemes we're seeing, they have these super high service charges, and then you're kind of eating away at any capital growth there. So this one's really exciting for me and my investors. 
that I deal with because they're saying, look, the service charge is only £1,700 per annum. You know, you don't really get that unless you're in a share of freehold in a, in a period house these days. It's fantastic. Okay, sorry. Uh, also, glorious day in West Sussex today. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Kieran. Always good to, to know you're there. Um, okay, that's great. So when it comes to amenities, um, you know, in Dubai we're spoiled. Everyone's got a gym. Everyone's got a swimming pool. Um, uh, do, do they have those sort of gym equipment there, or is that something that the service charges makes it prohibitive? So that's why Vision Point's perfect for investors that are overseas who want something they can just purchase and kind of, you know, let us deal with. Um, it's very simple on the amenities. You know, there's a 6,000 square foot roof terrace, but, you know, there's concierge, but they want to keep it simple. They want to, they want to keep your investment, you know, strong, booming. You know, you don't want to be bogged down with these, you know, 10,000 pound per year service charges. Calico Wharf, on the other hand, let me go back to this. Fantastic community. You know, gym, you're going to have a supermarket on site. There's going to be private concierge, landscape garden. If you want amenities, this is where you want to go. You know, there's going to be a plunge pool. It's going to have that real kind of work, live, play vibe to it. If, um, if that's kind of what your clients prefer. I think it's even got a cinema, isn't it? I think it's even got a cinema. Exactly. And yeah, and they're really focused on the outdoor space. You're right on the River Lee. So, you know, it's um, a lot more amenities on this development. But the rest, we, you know, it's best to kind of keep it light. And, you know, there's still tea to be announced as well on these, on these schemes. So they're still quite far away. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, you've been very, very quiet there, Rob. What is going on in, um, in London and why is it the focus of so many people's attention? Rob? Sorry, Chris, what's that? Sorry, could you repeat that, Chris? Oh, sorry. Um, it's in the news. Everyone's talking about London. Obviously, at Holborn, we've got Manchester, we've got Birmingham, we've got York, we've got Brighton. But at the moment, everyone's talking about London in the newspapers and on the radio. Why do you think that is? I think the reality is, is that you've got a situation that... Um, if you look at London's population presently, you've got somewhere in the region of I think 8.96 million people living in Greater London. The forecast um, for the population is continued for 2030 is to increase up to 9.83 million by 2030. That's an average of about 107, 108,000 um, extra. Uh, foots walking the streets um, over the next sort of seven years. So why would someone want to invest in this location? So the fact is, is that obviously London being the capital, everyone knows it, the infrastructure is here. We've got areas, uh, we've already mentioned areas that um, are extremely nice that have been built up and the, and the face of London has changed. But the problem is with London, is there's a lack of very, very good quality housing, despite there's a huge regeneration explosion over those past 20 to 30 years. So housing starts, if you can imagine, you've got a population increasing over the next seven years of 107,000 every single year. Where are you going to actually house these people? So there's no, everyone knows that the rental yields have increased quite significantly. Yes, we've had an increase in, in interest rates, but the rental yields actually kept up with that. So the fact is, is you over the last, I think it was 2022, the, um, the amount of housing starts was less than 20,000. So if you think you've got 107,000 people coming in over the next, um, ne every year for the next seven years, where are you going to house these people? Housing starts, is, and that's social housing and also private housing, has been somewhere in the region of under 20,000. Completions were also under 20,000. So it's no surprise that the um, rental yields have started to increase. Um, we've already mentioned that the, um, uh, um, the face of London has been completely changed with 
international money and an investment money coming into places like King's Cross. King's Cross, you take as an area 10 years ago, prices were selling, I think, for when we first launched that or when it was being first launched, um, both locally and internationally. You're talking about prices within the region of something, I think, somewhere like four or five hundred pound a square foot, somewhere in that region. Um, so now you're talking about in the region, I think, I think prices are somewhere like thirteen hundred pound a square foot. So, but what's quite interesting is that you've actually got pockets of London that are, are still competitively valued compared to other locations, such as King Cross. So Leo would have mentioned the scheme we've got up in Wood Green. Wood Green, there's been a lot of regeneration that we've been talking about North London with Muswell Hill and Hornsey. Barclay Homes took a very large development in Hornsey and completely regenerated the location. Prices started there at about £600 a square foot and ended 50% uh, higher, about £850, £900 a square foot. So what we're trying to do is people are interested in London because it's the capital city. But the reality is, is that when they come to us to say, look, we want these nice areas, but we can't uh, um, afford or we can't really see the re um, potential of growth um, in somewhere like White City, which is a regeneration area, where do you think is the next property explosion? Well, Leo then mentions North Kensington Gate, which is about a mile and a half up the street going northwards and part of the, the biggest regeneration in Europe, where prices are in the region of £800 a square foot compared to White City, which is somewhere in the region of £1,500 a square foot. So I think this is the reality is, the uh, obstacles for public transport is continually being improved across London. We've now got Crossrail, where I think you could be in Canary Wharf um, at three o'clock, and I think you can be at um, Heathrow Airport in West London, I think at about 3.35. So things are generally changing. Um, I've already mentioned the lack of good quality homes. So I think that in the past, people have looked at London and thought, well, it's too expensive. But the reality, therefore, will invest in, in sort of the, um, the cities in the provinces where the prices are cheaper. We may, may not get as high as rental, but the prices are cheaper. But actually, there are still pockets in London that are actually good value. That's so really I think good. that I hope that I hope that answers. I'm, I'm waffling a little bit there, Chris. But I hope that no, answers your question. No, that is, no, that's insightful. I mean, uh, one adage I, I always use, by the way, when people ask me, is if you can afford London, you buy London. <laughs> Although no disrespect to Manchester and Birmingham and York, but yeah, if you can afford, you know, London's, you know, is is a fantastic capital and it's got a great track record. Um, talking of track records, you've been on the ground, as you said, since 1995, and so you've seen a lot. I believe you've got five, four or five offices in London at the moment? Yeah, we've um, just procured an office up in Collendale, which is up in northwest London, where there's uh, also, again, a huge amount of capital um, appreciation potential. We've got an office there um, because you've got a huge Asian population there, so we've just opened up there. Um, the head office is based over here in Paddington Basin. Our new homes team is based here and also over on, on the east side of London. So if, if obviously potential clients um, want to come to London and are looking around, we're open for business and we're very happy to, to, to assist people um, either off plan or take them around and show them uh, prospective developments. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a lot of wealth managers. We've also got clients on. So please do reach out to us if you need any more information on any of any of those projects. What have you got coming up, Rob? We, I know I don't want to confuse anybody, but there's four great projects there. Anything on the in the pipeline? Yeah, we've got a scheme that um, we're working on. I think I've mentioned one to you in the past. We were going to do it, but then it was withdrawn. Um, right at the last minute, which is up in Cockfoss, is up in North London. Um, so we've got other projects over in West London, which, which we're in discussions with. Um, so we've always got, so we're, we're just about to take a development on down um, the south of the river called closer to, um, I think, Crystal Palace, which is um, slight, slightly further than deep south London. But prices are, are extremely good value down there. Um, and, and lots of different pockets right across town. So we're always looking for 
opportunities which which we can sell and bring to our clients with again with a view to decent rental yields and with the potential good capital appreciation over the next 10 years yeah i think you know it the question i always ask when talking to people what are you looking for you're looking for yield you're looking for capital appreciation um and most people have, uh, are looking really for capital appreciation over the well you you said it the medium to long term property medium to long term um i'm sitting here in dubai um and and you know that's famous for its flipping um we don't do that uh, in, in england so leo got anything else you'd like to add i was just going to say um when you've just mentioned flipping there um we do see that is becoming a little bit more uh prominent uh so people purchasing off plan properties in very very early phases and just before completion or you know a couple of months beforehand they they kind of go hold on the price per square foot has you know gone up a crazy amount why don't i just sell for you know the stamp duty or why don't i move this on so in answer to your last kind of comment i would actually say that is changing a little bit and you know we might be seeing more of a flipping culture than we kind of expected um, especially in these really like five year to ten year developments so it's quite um quite an interesting way to look at it really i think my comments would be i'd say flipping is probably on the rise now okay so they are assignable yeah yeah so that's kind of a lot of business we do is reassigning uh, contracts after three years before they've even been handed the keys interesting rob i would add, I would add Chris, so one other thing i would add that you know since i've been in business now for 28 years what i would say is that We've got clients where when I first set out business, I was looking for properties for those individuals that whether they were in Asia, Singapore, Dubai, etc., with a view that they were buying for their children to study and have a place here. They then rented them out. And I'm still looking after those clients 27, 28 years later. And very often the children of those people that were renting um, or, or taking those apartments, they become clients at the same time. So um, what I think what we try and do is to say, try and find the opportunities, but we try and project manage those opportunities for for the long term, not necessarily just always the short term. Yeah, that, we, we do get a lot of people saying, my children, they go to university, it's probably going to be in London, what have you got? Um, and they may be, you know, two or three years off. So yeah, we do get a lot of those, those inquiries. Um, yeah, okay, sure. uh, anything else, Leo or Rob? I think um, just, again, to add to that last comment is, you know, why would you spend, you know, depending on the area, 20 to 30,000, well, 50,000 pounds a year on rent, you know, even more at the moment, you know, for four years when you could buy an apartment for your, you know, kids, let them live there while they're studying. It's such a fantastic idea. And then we can, we can move it on for you once you're done or we'll turn it into a rental property for you. It just Thank makes you. sense instead of throwing away <laughs> capital. Absolutely. It's time in the market rather than timing the market. OK, thank you very much to both of you. Everybody out there, this will be recorded, will be on our website, Holden, holdeninvestmentproperties.com, um, as well as other previous award-winning shows. So please have a look at that um, and reach out to any of us or whoever your wealth manager is if you want any more information. So next week is uh, Edinburgh. We're going all the way up to Edinburgh next week, so please tune in. Rob, thanks very much. Hope all is well. You're, You're most welcome. You're Thank most you, welcome. Leo. I would, I would say, Chris, just lastly, if there's anyone's got any questions that they want to approach us uh, to you directly and even forward them on to myself or Leo or any of my team, we'd be happy to answer them. Of course. Thank you very much.